Hundreds of migrant workers protest in New York City against increasingly hostile environment. Over 500 migrant day workers protested in New York City against an increasingly hostile environment caused by a series of laws and bills aimed at stemming the flow of migrants to the U.S. and deporting those who are in the country unlawfully. The march was called by the National Day Laborer Organizing Network. Pablo Alvarado, head of NDLON, said that the different measures also increased discrimination levels to workers who earn lower salaries. He specifically mentioned bills by Republican-led states such as Texas, Arizona, and Oklahoma, also Louisiana which allow local law enforcement to arrest migrants that are in the country unlawfully. He also criticized President Joe Biden for approving an executive order that prohibits people found crossing the southern border illegally from requesting asylum during periods when daily illegal crossings surpass 2,500 unless they meet certain expectations. This is what he said. He did it because of political cowardice and that's weakness. If he thinks that will get him more votes or convince extremist Republicans, he's wrong. It's not a good political message, nor a good message for immigrants. The Department of Homeland Security deals with 4,000 asylum seekers on a daily basis. But with Biden's executive order, the southern U.S. border will temporarily shut down requests when the number of daily claimants rises above 2,500. The government will discontinue this restriction after the daily average of migrants crossing the border falls below 1,500 for a week. While critics say Biden's immigration plan does not go far enough to respond to the numbers of people showing up at the U.S. southern border, others warn of the human rights violations that this metro carries for vulnerable people seeking asylum. Moreover, three agents involved in enforcing the measure told ABC News that there is confusion over what to do with the thousands of migrants who will now be deported but whose countries will not accept them back such as migrants from Venezuela, China, and elsewhere in the Eastern Hemisphere. At the same time, several Department of Homeland Security officials responsible for carrying out the action, speaking on the condition of anonymity, said there is concern that detention facilities and processing centers for migrants could quickly become overcrowded. While these questions remain virtually unanswered, at a press conference this week, Department of Homeland Security officials said the agency will be sending resources to the border in the coming weeks. They said the new policy should reduce the time it takes to process migrants by 30 to 45 minutes in order to free up more space to hold migrants in custody. You see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. 500 of them. If 500 people in any third world country decided to get together and protest their own government and demand they make their own country safer so they wouldn't have to feel the need to come to the U.S., the reasons why people migrate to the U.S. include economic opportunities, family, education, safety, more rights and freedoms. Again, I'm going to reiterate, if 500 people decided if 500 people in any third world country decided to get together and protest their own government of that country, demanding it be safer, have more economic opportunities, and make it more safe for them over there, 500 people, it's a reasonably sized crowd. And if 500 people showed up to a government building in their own country, I'm sure the government would take notice of that. Would they listen and comply with these 500 people? I don't know. But that doesn't stop them from coming here and demanding things from U.S. government. Political cowardice, huh? The Department of Homeland Security deals with 4,000 a day. That's going to be reduced to 2,500 a day 
$2,500 a day, including those who meet certain expectations. So let's say a thousand of them meet the certain exceptions. That would be $3,500. And then the 500 who aren't allowed in here, they'll just wait until the next day, along with 2,000 more that are going to show up tomorrow and get allowed in the country. Again, I would not call that political cowardice. I would call that a very sad attempt at making it look like you're doing something about the illegal crossings, which you're not. Not a good message for migrants or immigrants. I mean, again, we have our own citizens to deal with, and every day 2,500 of uh, every day 2,500 migrants are allowed in the United States through illegally crossing, by the way. They cross illegally and then and then they request the asylum. Forget about the bad message it sends to immigration and immigrants. What about the bad message that sends to Americans? This is my stance. Every country should deal with their own citizens. And if that country's own citizens do not feel as if their country is safe, whether that be economically safe, or otherwise, making people fear for their physical safety, all you have to do is protest. Take 500 people and go to your local government building in whatever country you live in and demand that they make it safer. We're $30 trillion in debt. We clearly have our own problems here in the United States. We cannot be taking care of the third world. The real political cowardice isn't from this executive order only allowing 2,500 plus migrants coming in illegally. The real political cowardice is prioritizing foreign invaders who do not belong here over the American citizens for supposed persecution. I mean, every single country should take care of their own citizens. I'm just going to repeat myself. If that country's own citizens do not feel safe, do not feel economically secure, do not feel that there is an opportunity to do not feel that there is an opportunity to to improve their education or get a job or whatever the case may be protest for a better insert country name here we cannot be the savior of the third world and by the way immigration levels are never going to get under 1500 we deal with 4,000 a day, and the Biden administration is going to take in 2,500, which means, which means that the remaining 1,500, which means the remaining 1,500 are going to stay by the border, under a Texas bridge, whatever the case may be, and they're going to stay there until the next day where they can be invited to the U.S., along with 1,000 more that are going to show up. Who are going to be also allowed into the u.s how is that number ever going to reach 1500 or less that's another thing also if migrants leave a certain third world country and then the country that they left doesn't want them back why do we have to bear the burden of having to take care of them and take them in call those countries hostile if you left your own country hoping to come to the u.s only to find out that you're not allowed in because the number has supposedly exceeded 2,500, that's a wasted trip. I don't know what else to tell you. You should use the same tactics that you're using on the U.S. Call your own country hostile. Accuse them of being hostile. And just demand better living conditions. Demand the things from your own country in which you come here supposedly to get better jobs, higher education, safety. Demand all those things from your own country and make your own country great again. This country right now, the United States, is in distress. Like I said before, with $30 trillion in debt, illegal migrants who come here, they commit crimes, they kill people, they sexually assault people, they traffic drugs in here. We don't want that. We can't have that. Again, 2,500 a day is the limit of migrants able to come in here. That is just a sad and pathetic attempt at persuading anyone that you're taking any kind of action on the border issue. Every country has one obligation, and that is to protect and serve their own citizens. That's it. We need that number of 2,500 down to zero. Third world migrants are not our priority. They will never be our priority. And when Donald J. Trump gets into office, he is going to enact the world's largest deportation operation in human history. And that's going to help make America great again, along with other measures too.
and these countries are going to be forced to take back their own citizens because we do not want them, we do not need them. And again, if American women weren't told that abortion is health care, well, we'd have even more Americans on the way.